Biology of the Codfish The Atlantic cod is well known as a popular food fish, fished in commercial quantities off the Canadian and New England coasts and sold widely in North America and Europe. But the fascination of this unique and complex creature goes far beyond its familiar status as a dietary staple. In fact, the Atlantic cod has a truly extraordinary biology. For instance, the species is uniquely suited to survival in cold aquatic environments and exhibits various biological quirks and habits which are specifically adapted to such an existence. Furthermore, the Atlantic cod plays a crucial role in marine ecosystems, so much so, in fact, that the whole of the species' biology, from its physical makeup to its behavior and breeding cycles, is tailored not just to individual survival, but also to the success and growth of cod populations, the continuation of the species, and the wider well-being and harmony of the environment in which it lives. This video will examine the insane biology of the Atlantic cod in five main sections, each focusing on a different key part of the species' unique makeup and behavior. By the end, it should be clear why the Atlantic cod is an object of such fascination and admiration for biologists and how the species has managed to thrive and survive in some of the most inhospitable and environmentally challenging habitats on the planet. After all, as we shall find, there's more to this remarkable fish than meets the eye. Physical Characteristics of Codfish However, between the two dorsal fins lies another unique structure that is exclusive to all species of a cod, which is a fan-shaped network of blood vessels named glomerulus that helps the codfish regulate the blood pressure and cleans the blood by filtering and preventing the passage of large particles that could be damaging to the organism. The amazing complexity of these multitude physical features and their adaptations reflects the versatility and incredible efficiency of these organisms, really emphasizing the insane biology packed into every single codfish swimming in our vast oceans. Coherent with the summary, the content explains the details exactly about the uniqueness and physical aspect of the codfish. Curious taste buds, called chemoreceptors, cover the long, fleshy barbells that hang from the lower jaw and whiskers area in a wide range of fish like the catfish. But both are incredibly beneficial in that they help the cod locate home comfort and refine an area in unfamiliar surroundings due to their incredible sense of taste. Furthermore, long curved pelvic fins that are located in the lower abdomen and a shorter anal fin, which has absolute control over the direction of the fish swims. As soon as the cod begins to slow down, one can notice that the two primary dorsal fins, located near to the head, and the anal fin becomes visible. Dorsal fins are known for providing stability in the pitch axis when swimming and help reduce the body roll of the codfish. Moving forward from plain sight to the microscopic scale, the skin of cod is covered in tiny hexagonal shaped scales called tenoid scales which are composed of lightweight yet incredibly sturdy and protective bone-like formations. When looking at a single scale under a microscope, one can observe the complex layers and structures that stack together, providing amazing resilience and flexibility against the external environment, like the abrasive floors of the ocean or predatory attacks, making it virtually impenetrable and providing great protection to the fish's soft tissues. The scales also reduce drag caused by water resistance, effectively allowing the fish to move more swiftly and efficiently in water which ultimately is essential due to the ever-present predator-prey competition in nature between organisms. These scales are also one of the reasons why codfish feel so leathery and have a rough texture whenever they are handled out of water. Reproduction and My Cycle Codfish usually reproduce beginning at 4-5 to five years of age. Every year, in the middle of January and June, females produce about 100 million eggs in the sea. The eggs get fertilized by the male's sperm and turn into embryos. This stage normally happens in a cool area, about 0 to 4 degrees Celsius. The cod eggs will sink to the deep sea and join among the seaweeds upon the embryo stage. During summertime, the embryo will develop into young fish called larvae, but finally, just a couple of them could actually survive to develop into adults. The survival chance is small merely to ensure the right quantity of codfish retain the balance of the ecosystem. When they first hatch from eggs, 
baby codfish drift in a cloud of plankton for almost 20 days. Throughout this time, their primary job is to eat and grow. After they reach about 4 millimeters long, they will dive deep down to the bottom of the sea and join the food web. In the first couple of months, they will stick to the crustaceans and insects. Then they will gradually shift their food regimen to include just about any smaller animal that lives in the sea, beginning from small snails, marine worms, sea stars, as well as other small fish. When the juveniles become adults, their food regimen will increase and switch to any animals that are suitable to their mouth size, like mollusks. A fully grown codfish may eat a fish as large as a third of their own body length. According to the knowledge, adult codfish can survive as much as 13 years. However, in fishery science, people normally treat the codfish as a fish that can reach adult age as long as six years. After they get matured, codfish generally will produce in the same area each year. This kind of reproductive behavior is among the reasons why cod can retain the balance of the ecosystem. Well, it is also a good sign for fishery to maintain the amount of fish for sustainable harvest as well. Feeding Habits and Diet Once codfish reach about one year in age, they become essentially carnivorous and begin feeding on smaller fish, such as haddock and various invertebrates. Different populations of codfish are known to consume certain prey, although there is some overlap. For example, the Gulf of Maine codfish population primarily consumes haddock and hake, while the population in the Georges Bank region prefers herring. The asymptotic weight of most adult codfish is between 25 and 35 kilograms, or roughly 60 to 80 pounds, a relatively large size. However, as codfish continue to be overfished, their average weight and overall size has decreased. The period of time during which codfish are actively feeding typically ranges from April to October. In colder months, especially during snowy winters, they become less active and feed less. Pacific codfish populations follow a similar pattern. When feeding on benthic or bottom-dwelling organisms, codfish are known to exhibit a tendency of searching and eating. This type of movement is characterized by periods of slow forward motion, where the fish swims while using its senses to find food. Once food is located and captured, the fish begins to eat and move forward or upward. At the same time, the feeding habits that occur in daytime versus nighttime are still not fully understood and remain a topic of interest among researchers. Jigging and long landing are common methods of catching codfish in the U.S. Jigging, which is a method of creating jerky or jolting movements in bait in order to provoke a predator, is especially effective when codfish are feeding on sand lance and other small fish. On the other hand, long landing involves setting out a main fishing line several kilometers in length with branches and baited hooks spaced intermittently along the line. Both methods are used by commercial fishermen to catch codfish all throughout New England and in Maryland. Codfish can demonstrate significant adaptive behavior in the face of environmental and ecological changes. For example, in the presence of various stressors such as unsustainable fishing practices and the spread of aquatic invasive species, many codfish populations have displayed shifting their diet to focus on different prey that is more readily available. This may be a strategy that allows these organisms to cope with a changing environment and ensures their continued survival. Codfish in the Ecosystem Ecology is the scientific study of the relationships between living organisms and their environment. The codfish is a very important animal in the Atlantic Ocean's northwestern shelf ecosystem, of which it is a top predator. The Northwestern Shelf Ecosystem is located off the coast of New England and Nova Scotia in the Atlantic Ocean. In this area of the ocean, the codfish resides in the upper middle ocean layer, at depths between 50 and 1,000 meters. The ecosystem is set in a cool climate with temperature averages of 5 degrees Celsius. This ecosystem is very nutrient-rich, with an abundance of primary producers, organisms which produce their own energy. The ecosystem also boasts a wide variety of smaller organisms and fish species, and the codfish is one of the main top predators of this ecosystem. This means that it is one of the largest carnivorous fish in the ecosystem and does not have any natural predators. The species of cod that reside in this certain area are not migratory, and they will go to wherever food may be most plentiful based on changes of the seasons. 
These fish mainly feed on other fish species, but are also known to eat invertebrates, such as lobster when available. It is interesting to note that when juvenile cod are small, they will often feed on small copods and other zooplankton in the ecosystem. This kind of feeding is very important to their growth. As codfish grow larger, they will stop feeding on such small-sized animals. And this is why it is only really the youngest members of the family that are concerned with producing in the first place. The large females tend to migrate to a certain area of the ocean floor called the spawning ground and release their eggs there. The males will then release their sperm and the eggs are fertilized. This kind of reproduction has its own challenges. If the sperm and eggs are not released at the precise same second, the eggs will not be fertilized and will be lost. Then they will float with the currents. And this way is a very good way of spreading codfish across many regions of the ecosystem. This is a very interesting and logical life cycle with many intricate nuances. This cycle has been continuing for years, but it has begun to be put under pressure by commercial fishing. As the fish are captured and killed, there are fewer numbers of codfish in the ecosystem to carry on this life cycle. Exhaustive research has gone into the exact feeding habits and needs of codfish in the Northwest Shelf ecosystem. But it is clear that the unnecessary human intervention in the life cycle and competition for resources imposed by commercial fishing poses a constant threat to the stability of this food web.